What the? What? Ah, oh, oh, hiya, Harry. Fine. You? Fine. How's your wife? Fine. That's fine. Oh, what was the finish of that traffic ticket you got? Fine. Fine. How's Mrs. Martin? Fine. Say, Harry, there's a clever thought. Cigars? No, you know I, I smoke don't smoke cigarettes. cigars. I don't give... Listen, look in the window. Answer that. How long since you took a present to your wife? No. Now, listen, I take my wife a present every Saturday night. Oh, you do? The paycheck. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. I do. No, now, now listen to me. When you take your wife a present... That's the present. A little gift. Oh, say, they've changed the spelling, haven't you? You're they? getting away from my question. Now, listen. When you take your wife a present, if it only cost a dollar, the mere fact that you thought of her when you were away means more to her than if you gave her a check for a thousand dollars. You say, I never saw it in that light before. Oh, you didn't. Is that what you've done? Exactly. Thanks for the thought. So long, Harry. So long, Jose. <clears throat> Fine. I get my wife a present. <clears throat> Your husband just came in the store. I want to buy a little gift for my sweetheart. You know, a present. There's something you can suggest. Here's an appropriate gift. Oh, a parasol, huh? What color do you prefer? Oh, I don't know. She has a blue dress and a green dress and a torn dress. Of course, she couldn't wear a torn parasol, could she? <laughs> Silly. This will go with most anything. May I model it for you? I'd love to have. Thank you. Right now, he's letting a red-headed hussy pick out a gorgeous present for herself. Hmm. And she's strutting back and forth scandalously. Oh, why should this have happened to a daughter of mine? Say, listen, honey, I'm coming right over to see you. Yes, all right, I'll be right over. Oh, it certainly has a certain amount of tang to it, hasn't it, huh? I love this one. Do you really? Yes, I do. Well, then I'll buy it. May I wrap it for you? Oh, no, don't worry about that. Now, how much is it? That'll be one dollar, please. One, pardon me, just a moment. One dollar. Very cheap at that, too. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, dear. Just a moment, sir. Yes? Uh, Taxi. Get a parcel. I bought it. Uh, I suppose you couldn't wait for your sales check? No, I was in a hurry. <laughs> uh, uh, what did you pay for it? Dollar. It has a $15 price mark on it. <laughs> Where? Right there. Oh, yeah. Well, I can easily rub that off. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Martin. Close your eyes. Here you are. The sweetest little wife in the whole world. Didn't that redhead at the gift shop want it? What? Why, Evelyn. Speak to my lawyer. I'll right. take him down, but not to no lawyer. Hey, wait a minute. You say the taxi cab almost hit you? Within three feet? My, oh, my. Well, now I tell you what you do. You go home and stay in bed. Nervous shock. I'll start suit at once for $50,000. Oh, by the way, it would help me a great deal if you could aid to break your arm. Thank you very much. You shall have your divorce, Mrs. Martin. But first, I should like to know a few details. Of course, you understand. I don't like to be hard on the men in these cases. Now, uh, how much salary does your husband earn? 150 a month. Well, 140 will be enough alimony for him. Does your husband drink? No. Now, didn't you ever see him take a drink? Well, on our wedding night, he did drink a toast. Hmm. Started drinking before the ink was dry on the marriage certificate. Ah, uh, those drunkards. Did he ever leave you at night? Well, only on Thursday nights when he went to the Elks. Did he ever ask you to go to the Elks with him? No. Have you in your possession any sworn statement, affidavit, or deposition from any man over the age of 21 and a resident of this state for over three years who ever saw him at the Elks? No. 
I think that the cheapest, most despicable form of deception, to drag in the fair name of the greatest, grandest, most noble organization in the world, the Loyal Order of Moose. It's the Elks. Oh, yes, quite right. Did he ever strike you? Well, once when I was choking on a fishbone, he hit me on the back. Oh, he did, eh? Did you tell him that you were choking on a fishbone? I couldn't. How did he know you were choking on a fishbone? I don't know. Waiting until wife was in an ill and dying condition and then inflicted upon her bodily harm. Now, you know, Mr. Martin, according to the ethics of my profession, I really shouldn't be talking to you. An honorable attorney will never accept a case in which he represents the opposing side. But uh, never since I've been practicing law have I encountered anyone quite so brutal, quite so cold, quite so dissolute. In fact, the case was so nasty and dirty, I didn't want to touch it. But when I thought of your poor wife, lying there practically on her deathbed, and you, with malice aforethought, deliberately striking her, my blood boiled. And I accepted the case for a retainer of only your wife's engagement ring. Now listen, mister, I, I never struck in my life. Honestly, I... What do you want? Hey, bring in the papers of Martin versus Martin. The civil ones, not the criminal ones. Criminal? Say, wait a minute. I never struck anybody in my life. But I will if I can find the guy who got me to buy that parasol. Now, Mr. Martin, on the night of August 14th, your wife was choking to death. Sensing an opportunity to get her out of the way, you stealthily crept up behind her. Behind her, mind you, and struck her a death dealing blow. Oh, now, wait just a minute. Now, you listen to me, mister. You too, missus. I Who won the ball game? The Giants did. Now, listen. Now, look, will you let me explain this just a minute? Here's how the whole thing happened. My wife was sitting at the table just like... Please, will you listen? She was sitting at the table just like that. Then all of a sudden, up she jumps and she grabs her throat like that. And I realized that she was choking. And to alleviate her sufferings, I just touched her on the back like that. Now? That's all oh, I have. Good heavens! What's that? My nervous system is shattered. Oh, I think my arm is broken. And don't forget the mental anguish. Police! Police! Why do people hire lawyers for a little thing like this? I don't know. Step up there and tell that judge something. You'll be out of here in a minute. Huh? Your hat. Huh? Your hat. You're an upstanding businessman with a record as clean as a hound's tooth. Sure. You've never been pinched before, have you? No. Oh, wait a minute, yes. A long while ago, I was only seven years of age, though. It was 4th of July, and I busted some guy's window with an air rifle. <laughs> you know, just a pit's crank. Huh? That uh, uh, kid's prank. That's all. Uh... Case of the People versus Martin. Charges shoplifting. From the district attorney's office, for the prosecution. Harry Martin, take the stand. Don't go away, I'll be through in a minute. Make it snap, eh? Okay. Uh, raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear to no, 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 no. I do. Huh? He does. That's all. Come on, let's get out of here. I, oh, I thought that was... Oh. How do you do? Good morning. Now, what's your name? Harry Martin. How do you know? How do I know what my name is? That's right. My mother used to call me that. Oh, did your mother ever call you to her and say, your name is Harry Martin? No. Oh, you mean you heard her call you Harry? That's right. That's hearsay and not admissible. That's, that's not admissible. So, were you drunk when you stole the parasol? I know. Oh, you were sober when you stole it. No, when I, when I said no, I, I meant I didn't steal the parasol. That is, when I didn't steal the parasol, I uh, was sober. Will you answer I mean, the question? Were you drunk when you stole the parasol? No. That makes your offense still worse. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Were you ever in trouble before? Why, uh, before what? Uh, before you stole the parasol. Well, no. Uh, we'll overlook that admission of guilt. Uh, yeah, I see. Tell me, are you a married man? Well, uh, yes and no. Answer the question, yes or no. 
Well, I, I don't know how to answer the question. See, my wife is suing me for divorce. Yeah, but on what grounds? Well, well uh, 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 wait a moment. I can... uh, just let me refresh your memory. You are charged with constant drunkenness from the moment of your marriage, with absenting yourself from home on many occasions without any valid reason or excuse. And when your wife was ill, you struck her repeatedly. Oh, no, 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 no. She was choking. She was choking you? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, you no. mean you were choking her? That's right. No, no, no. Uh, now, I... let's not be frivolous. Do you mean to infer that she was choking herself? No, no, I can explain the whole thing, Judge. Let, let me explain this thing. Do you know Ellen Green? No. You realize you're under oath? Yes, I know. And you don't know Ellen Green? No. Well, for your information, Ellen Green is a secretary employed by a respected brother attorney of mine, Cromwell Crutt. Oh, that dang. On the afternoon of September 3rd, he went into Brother Crud's office. And while discussing some legal affairs with him, he committed a vicious, dastardly, and unwarranted attack on this fair young lady. Oh, now I can explain this, how it happened. Now, uh, don't you only have to repeat it before the grand jury. Grand jury? Uh, Your Honor, this man Martin has already been charged with shoplifting for which he's being prosecuted. And on the day of the shoplifting, a counterfeit 50 cent piece was found in the cash drawer of the store. And I have the word of one of the finest attorneys in the state that he cruelly attacked his secretary. And he has the brazenness, the effrontery, to deny that he was ever arrested. And I am going to prove that he is not only a thief and a shoplifter and an attacker of women, a lying, cheating, drunken husband, but I shall now prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that he is a gunman and a murderer. And that he might possibly be the bandit who has been terrorizing this country under the alias of Babyface Wilson. Uh, you were arrested before, were you not? Oh, well, that was, that was 35 years ago. Uh, yeah, I know the date very well. You were armed with a gun. Oh, it was an air rifle. I'm interested neither in the make or the caliber of the weapon of death. He was standing on a corner with only the cool assurance that an assassin can have when this brave officer risked his life to silence the sheet of flame that was issuing from his gun. Well, it, was, it was the 4th of July. Uh, you've already testified as to the date. In uh, front of whose home did this shooting take place? I don't know. Oh, I see. Uh, just annihilating people for the love of the kill. Oh. Show him the telegram. Huh? Show him the telegram. telegram. Yeah, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, Judge. I can explain this thing very quickly. Here. Yeah. Here's a telegram. Yeah. Take a look at this for a minute. Where did you get this dagger? Dagger? That's not a dagger, that's a penknife. Dagger. You don't need to be armed in this cart. We have police protection here. There are fingerprints on it, Your Honor. Take it away from me! Take it away! Take it to the arsenal! I don't want it. Well, now listen, you see, I... That's a, no, no, the dagger's a pen knife. I use it for shopping my pencils. Oh, 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 oh. Huh? Read the telegram. Yes, I'll read this telegram to give you an idea who I am. Harry Martin, 119 Highland Avenue, Buffalo, New York. That's me. It says here, understand the Bible estate can be purchased at an attractive uh, figure. Just a moment. Uh, please read that again. Yes. Understand Bidwell estate can be purchased at attractive figure. Uh, this is probably Morse code. Oh. Uh, go ahead, continue. Understand the food. Understand the Bidwell estate can be purchased at attractive figure. Send all dope. Dope? You dope! How long have you been trafficking in dope? Uh, huh? Dope? You know what dope means? I know that it's a violation of the narcotic laws, and in my opinion, in my opinion, Your Honor, we may have before us the head of the largest and greatest drug dispensing ring in the world. How much money did you make last year? $150 a month. What other income have you? None. And you received no income of any kind other than that? No. No? Well, yes. On last Thanksgiving Day, I, I won a turkey at a raffle. Oh, and uh, of course you reported that in your income tax. No. No? No. I should like to have that call to the attention of the collector of internal revenue. Right. Oh. Uh, Your Honor, I shall not take up further of the court's time with the addition of this fiend's criminal record which includes two, mind you, two citations for failing to make a boulevard stop. It wasn't his fault. No, I was drunk. Quiet. Yeah, I'm a quiet drunk. I never get noisy, Judge. 
And for running his radio after 11 o'clock at night. Mm. And, Your Honor, I have personally, myself, on a dozen different occasions, seen him in a den of ice, betting on horse races. In fact, I rarely ever go into the place without seeing him. I rest. I could take a nap myself. <clears throat> Come here, Al. Why don't you let me tell that mug a thing or two? Well, go ahead, but be nice about it, will you? He's a kind looking old buzzard. Hey, you. I'm no lawyer, but I'm a citizen of this town. I've known this guy for a long time, and he's all right. Right. I want this man to smitly and cut out all this monkey business. <sighs> Remember the sentence of this cop is? Harry, old pal. Joe. I've got good news for you. Good news? You've been pardoned. Pa oh, is this it? And on top of that, I've got better news for you. What is it? Your wife has forgiven you. Really? She's waiting for you, Harry. In a little cottage at the end of the lane. Uh-huh. Go to her, old pal. But don't go home empty-handed. What do you mean? Take her a little present. The mere fact that you thought of her makes a woman more happy than if you gave her a check for a thousand dollars. Oh, well, I, I agree with you, but you see, I've been in jail so long, I haven't got a dime. Your old pal Joe never forgets. What do you mean? Do you remember the little parasol you bought for her on Wifey's Day? It got broken? Yeah, yeah, I, re I remember that one, yeah. I had it fixed for you. You had it fixed? I did. Well, I'm sorry. You're sorry. You'll have to have it fixed again. Oh, whoa!